Hey, what we're going to do today is make a penny can stove. Uh, this is a lightweight backpacking stove. runs on isopro alcohol. It uh, gives you about 400 degrees for uh, about a half an hour with an ounce of fuel. Um, there's no moving parts. It's popular with backpackers because of how lightweight it is. This one a little white, lightweight, more lightweight than others. I'm actually holding this one down. Uh, if we don't hold it down, it will float away. What we're going to use today to make this is the bottom of two separate pop cans. We're going to use a sharpie and a thumbtack uh, to poke the hole for the burners. We're going to use two different books. Uh, so today I've chosen Arthur Miller's The Crucible and Utopia. We're going to use a pair of scissors and some fiberglass insulation for the wicking material inside the stove. And we're going to seal it with some RTV silicone sealant. The first thing that we need to do to make this is decide which of the two cans is going to be the top of the stove that has the burners on it. And the reason we need to do that is that we, uh, we want to be, have the, ha the, the whole can and not the can part that we're going to cut away when we're actually poking the holes for the burners. So to poke the holes for the burners, I'm going to mark 16 holes. And then I'm going to puncture the 16 holes. I've also poked three holes in the top. That's where I'll pull, pour the fuel in when, I, when I'm done. With the burners marked, I'm ready to mark where I'm going to cut the cans. Now the shorter of the two cans needs to be the top with the burner. So I'm going to remove the crucible. And with my sharpie, just give this can a spin around. Now for the bottom of the stove, the blank bottom, I want that piece a little bit lo longer. So I'll go ahead and add the crucible again. And with that sharpie on top of both, I'll give this a spin around. And then I'm ready to cut the cans. Now, both cans, uh, both sides of my can don't exactly fit together very well. So I'm going to use my pliers now to crimp them. What I'm going to just do is take these pliers, grab the can here, and just give it a little twist. I'll repeat that every millimeter, few millimeters. And now these two cans will fit together much better. But before I put these together, what I want to do is fill it with the fiberglass insulation and then seal it with the sealer. Now I really don't want to skimp on this. Uh, I want to stuff this so that uh, there will be plenty of fiberglass insulation to take the alcohol all the way from the bottom to the top. And I want to take a little bit of extra insulation and just fill in the lip that I poked the burners in earlier. That will allow this insulation to take the alcohol all the way up to the top. Now I want to take my RTV silicone sealant and I'm just squaring this on a uh, half of a hotel key that I'd saved and I uh, just cut in half for this to use as a spreader. So I'm putting a good sized blob on there And I'll take the bottom half of the stove and just spread that kind of evenly. This is, uh, it's not too critical at this point. Uh, get it all the way around. I'll, uh, now, now I'm ready to put the two halves of the stove together. And uh, I'll take that extra sealant and just give it a whirl around with my finger. And 
Now this particular uh, sealant takes an hour to cure. So we'll let this, uh, takes 24 hours to cure. So we'll let this sit for a day. We'll take it outside and give it a test. What I've got here is one of a hundred different one ounce fluid bottles you'll find at the uh, pharmacy. And I'll use that to fill this up with fluid. Wait till that settles down. And then I'll take some priming fluid and squirt that all around the top and the sides of the cans. That'll warm up the can and uh, get the uh, convection going so that the wicks uh, can do their work. Once I've got plenty of priming fluid around there, I don't want to skimp on that. I'll give it a light. And then I want to drop the penny in the top. That's heating up the stove right now and the alcohol is being pulled up the fiberglass uh, to the top of the burner and I can see some of the burners are starting to catch. And what will happen is when this priming fluid all burns away, uh, it'll leave us with the jets burning. Now we're out here right now in some pretty cold conditions so uh, let's uh, let this primer fluid burn away and see if we need to reprime it, which you might need to do in the winter. Uh, but in the summer you should be good to go right away. Now here I've lost most of my priming fluid and you can see the burners are going. This is putting out some great heat. Uh, it's about, it burns at about 200 degrees and uh, with this ounce of fluid that I've got in here I've got about a half an hour of burn time. So uh, that'll keep you warm or cook your food great.